black and white. The color film with Technicolor got cheaper by the second season. And then he explained to me you know, about film cameras, and he had film cameras, and was into photography then with my mother. And he went and shot some fun home movies. But I liken it to that, people's perspective. It's like back then the world was black and white. Back then the world was different. Now we're in a different world. We are lined up to have wars much bigger than World War II. The stock market, I don't know when it's going to die, but it's all based on total fraud. It can't go on forever. And it's been plunging 200, 300, 400 points Friday, Monday, and today. I mean, where is it right now? We can put it on screen. I hope it goes back up. Even though it's fiat and pure garbage, I, I'm not here cheerleading for it to fall. I mean, I got a family. I just want good medicine, private property, a right to be free, a right to be a father. The system's trying to undermine that. We're being captured. We're being enslaved. We're going into a system of conquest. And David Knight is riding shotgun with us back at the InfoWars News Center. Uh, I got an interview with Louis Farrakhan. And he doesn't do a lot of interviews, folks, especially with outside media. And I got there, and what I thought was the case, I mean, they're all daily listeners. Louis Farrakhan listens to the show basically all the time, you know, every few days. They had a computer just turn on, and my show was playing. Well, I mean, it was like, it, it was it was over the top. Um, people say, well, Louis Farrakhan, he says, kill the police. Well, he said, if they shoot us in the back, we should you know go after the officers that did it. And it's incendiary, and we talk about it in the interview. Doesn't mean I agree with everything he says. But it's about opening a dialogue. And if we get Louis Farrakhan, which he's already doing, calling for cooler heads to prevail and not to buy into this George Soros civil war, it's going to be a big, big deal. And the fact that a William Benny's a listener, a Matt Drudge is a listener, Donald Trump's crew are listeners. Trump's familiar with the show for years. Wouldn't call him a listener. Um, the fact that so many prominent people, generals, you name it, it's not about Alex Jones. It's about the fact that we've got a lot more things in common than we've got in difference. And the New World Order did a really good job in the 80s and 90s going in, taking over militias, leading a lot of them, making them anti-government, uh, making them all paranoid and hiding out so they could be controlled to create a narrative like there's the militias creeping around to get you when they're as constitutional as George Washington and should be out in the open doing open carries like we did with the Texas Land Commissioner, Jerry Patterson, last year with 1,500 people. They hated that, and they voted out those illegal laws after that. And we go out and march with guns, you know, openly when the police say they're going to arrest us. I mean, we do civil disobedience, folks, but we smile at the police while we do it, and they smile back at us. There's a few bad ones, a few punks, but, I mean, the globalists want to trick us to kill each other. I don't want to hurt black people. They don't want to hurt me on average. If they can be wound up and tricked by George Soros, they are. And then they're going to be set up. And, I mean, Farrakhan talked about how Obama was sent to set black people up and about, you know, just the whole agenda. It was unprecedented. And I, I, I want to put out the whole two-hour interview, but something this hot can't wait. I, you know, last night I was at dinner with Farrakhan. They, they were wanting to put it out quicker. So we're going to go meet with him today before I leave, and I guess we're just going to... I guess they're probably right. We'll, we'll talk to them. It'll at least take a week, though, to get all the clips really good and coordinate and promote it with a few promo clips and things. But we'll just put the whole thing out end to end. I wanted to do the interview where we you talk about things historical and play clips, kind of make a documentary. And we'll, we'll do that down the road. But I want to be the guy that gets the big interview that nobody else can get with the Donald Trump. But he does interviews with the Matt Drudge, with the Louis Farrakhan, uh, with the David Icke joining us tomorrow. Just to get people outside of the box. Going back to Wayne Madsen here in a moment, riding shotgun with us a little bit in the next hour. Wayne's got some big reports he wants to go do here in the near future that I'm not going to mention on air, but they're big. I'm looking at funding to decide whether we can do it because he does do things on a shoestring budget, but it, it still taxes us. But I think I'm going to probably send him on his next mission if we can really confirm he's going to be able to do the things we're looking at doing in Europe and in England. But that's why it's more important than ever that you buy the books, you buy the videos, you buy the Hillary for prison t-shirts that are selling out in this limited edition when they're gone, they're gone. That you get the New Year's special uh, of a Deep Cleanse and X2 and Secret 12. <clears throat> Incredible detoxification for your body in the new year. So much of what you do isn't even exercise, what you put in your body. 
Uh, I mean, if this doesn't game change for you, I'll eat my hat. 4.8 star ratings and third-party sites, InfoWarsLife.com, 15% off everything in the store on top of discounts on many products with promo code GIFT15 at checkout. And we need the funds to be strong. I mean, quite frankly, I, I, I could use 100 times the funds I have. I mean, I spend so much time scrabbling around, worrying about how much stuff costs, equipment, reporters, you name it, when I could just really not worry about financing. We've already done what other people haven't done, thanks to your support out there and your prayers. But we need folks to spread the word about the broadcast and send the links to the show, the videos, the articles out. Infowars.com forward slash show. We need people to put them, us on their Facebook, their Twitter. The trolls hate it. They go, how dare you be on Facebook here with Zuckerberg? We're invading Zuckerberg. We fight on the battlefield. Be like in the Matrix. How dare you inject into the Matrix, Neo? You're with the Matrix. No, he's not. He's going into the Matrix. We're outside the Matrix, but we go into the Matrix. <laughs> and we engage on InfoWars and, 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 and Prison Planet in our own right. But those are launch pads to YouTube and everywhere else. And we're going to continue to hurt the globalists and get billions of views in the aggregate on YouTube alone. PrisonPlanet.tv, 15 cents a day, week to week, $5.95. But get a yearly membership. It ends in just a few weeks. I'm going to run it for two more weeks or maybe a week or so. The New Year's special. You can get six months free. We've never offered six months free when you sign up for a year. You pay for six months, you get six months. 20 people can use each membership. It's meant for activism. But whether you share the membership or don't, prisonplanet.tv, go join. I want to thank those that are members. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.com. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for our proprietary nutraceuticals, InfoWarsHealth.com for the amazing longevity products. When you buy it there, you get the best discounts you're going to find. Free shipping when you sign up for auto ship, 30% discounts when you become a member, 10 bucks. You can call the number if you want help to decide whether you want to be a member or not, 888-789-9277, 888-789-9277. Take action today. All right, I want to bring Wayne Madsen back in here. He's with us 20 minutes, 30 minutes the next hour. And Joe Biggs joins us from Oregon. But I get excited because this is an epic time to be alive. I want to get into what Wayne just mentioned. That's why I love Wayne because I forget to get the stuff and he covers it. USA Today's cover. Saudis cut ties to Iran as crisis intensifies. We're going to get into this here with him in a moment. But, but just sitting back, being in the middle of InfoWars for three plus years now, David, watching everything we've warned of unfolding. We don't, I know, enjoy the fact we've been proven right. I am horrified that we've been dead on, except for it being worse than we thought. I mean, I am horrified. I didn't get giddy when another high-level source told me that no, Obama is a radical Wahhabist and prays to Mecca in the White House and hates America and wants to bring America down. Um. Uh, I, I didn't think, oh, I've got a big story. Oh, this is great. I got physically nauseous. Literally, when I got in my car later, shook some. Almost had to pull over and throw up because of the, of the sadness, of the deceptions, the lies. The, what, uh, what's coming next? I mean, I, I, I just, the danger of the position we're in, the responsibility we have, uh, you know, it, it's just, Good people have laid down, so now every weirdo crazy's taken over because they have an appetite to dominate us. Uh, David Knight, then we're going to go back to Wayne Madsen. Yeah, Alex, you know, when you're, what you're saying about uh, Louis Farrakhan, I haven't seen that interview, but when you're, the things that you're saying sounds very much like what we've heard from Larry Pinckney, who used to be with the old Black Panthers. He said they weren't a threat to the government as long as they stayed within the black community. Once they started reaching out and saying, you know what, this is a problem we all need to come together with, that's when they came after them with agent provocateurs, uh, shut them down. Same and thing. By the way, Farrakhan said, because he's now doing that, uh -huh. not to interrupt you, he's bringing up such good points. He said at dinner for three hours, and he even let us record some of it. He let me record the whole thing, but I forgot to record until I asked halfway through. He said, they're coming to kill me because I want to bring people together, and mm -hmm. I'm going to. Uh, you're absolutely right. Go ahead. Same thing with Malcolm X. Uh, that, that's what happened with Malcolm X. He stopped looking just within the black community. He started to realize, hey, this is a much larger issue, number one. Number two, as we've pointed out many times, everyone needs to come together to, to solve this problem. White people need to understand they're next on the list, and it's already happening to white people in a large degree. They don't have the kind of 
close community that the black people do or that awareness, that hyper awareness of the oppression. But yeah, it's coming to everybody. And the black people need to understand they're not going to be able to turn this back unless the white community in general understands that it's their problem too. So that's the, the part about Black Lives Matter that George Soros put in that is so dangerous because it compartmentalizes people. It breaks them into little groups that can't do anything. That's why we need that's to come together. That's the New York City, big city Democrat mafia model. And the Republicans yeah. play it too. Mm -hmm. But I mean I, I mean, I literally grew up with Christian, somewhat conservative parents, but they were very liberal when it came to civil rights. My grandfather had come back from World War II, whole family were Democrats ran for county office, won on an Eisenhower ticket of uh, ending, you know, uh, uh, Jim Crow and all the rest of it. And and so, you know, I grew up never hearing racist comments, never hearing, in fact, have, hearing white guilt that, that we'd been oppressive and bad need to build people up. And, and, and so that's why then here the left is claiming I'm this racist makes me so angry. But then it wasn't until I got around Democrats and abortion people behind the scenes in New York and Chicago that the upper class black people and whites literally get off on keeping black people down and feeding on them and watching them kill each other. It's mm -hmm. sick. It's disgusting. And they're filth. They are filth. It's just like the radical feminists blaming Germans for all the raping when it's their darling radical Muslims they brought in. Sorry, David, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and we just had a quote that the uh, crew put up there from Malcolm X. I'm paraphrasing it. It goes, if you're not careful, the media is going to have you hating the people who are oppressed and loving the oppressors. And that's exactly right. What happened in, uh, in, in uh, the German situation in Cologne, they had video footage of this. And they knew that this wasn't Germans. You could see very clearly who was doing this. They withheld that information. That's why people were saying, wait a minute, you're covering this up. They withheld it for several days before it eventually made its way out. The truth eventually does come out. But they wanted to hide that because they've got an agenda. They realize that they can bring new people in, bring people in from areas that our, our uh, government, the European government, NATO, have gone in created a war in their country, created hatred, bring those people in from the war zones. It's an organized takeover. Yes. As the Hungarian, the Romanian presidents have said, and now the Swiss top general has told the Swiss, train, get more guns, they're collapsing Europe, prepare for civil unrest. The story's on Infowars.com. Absolutely, David. Let's go back to Infowars.com reporter, Wayne Madsen Report.com. Wayne Madsen with us 20 minutes, 30 minutes to the next hour. Wayne, thank you for riding shotgun and giving commentary today. Let's get into the larger destabilization because it's, they're not just attacking us. They're using the crisis to attack Muslims as well, destabilizing them. If we think we've got refugees now, we already have a major civil war between Shiite and Sunni kicked off by the CIA on record, quarterbacked by uh, Saudi Arabia. You're the expert on this, but in the Middle East, scores of times. What's happening right now, Wayne Madsen? Well, what's happening is that the uh, Turks and the Saudis are uh, forming an alliance. And uh, the Turks, which were always known, they were always known as secular since the days of Kemal Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish Republic after the fall of the Ottomans, we're seeing this alliance, a Wahhabist Muslim Brotherhood alliance come into play here. And, um, and, and right now, you've got... Uh, the, the, the source, see, Soros was recently in Istanbul where he met with Erdogan, the Turkish president, Obama's uh, Middle East council, uh, Mis, uh, Mr. Erdogan, the neo-sultan uh, of Turkey. Uh, and he, he doesn't try to stage any demonstrations against Erdogan, even though Erdogan is trying to institute Sharia law in Turkey. Uh, it's, it's little baby steps now. Uh, and, and what we saw, what did, so what did Soros do in Ukraine, for example? He overthrew a democratically elected president, and now we've got neo-Nazi battalions fighting alongside Chechen Muslim terrorists fresh from the battlefield in Syria, fighting uh, a Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine, and, and under, the, under the protective umbrella of the CIA and NATO. Uh, Unbelievable. This is what Soros does. Uh, Soros, uh, look, the reason, the, there's a reason why the last James Bond movie still uh, has the, the it, it's not Spectre, the, the villain uh, is working for a group called Quantum. It's no mistake that Soros's hedge fund is called Quantum. The, the villain, uh, Blofeld, in, in the last Bond movie is, is, is Quantum, basically bringing in all the past, the last, I guess, this They're telling us it's Soros. Soros. They're rubbing our face. Why do Soros? Yes, because the British, 
British establishment and MI6, which basically has approved every uh, Bond script since the first one, they always remember.